toys, books, tapes and DVDs, antiquities, oddities, an embalmed horse, all at amazing prices. Necropolis, serving up everything from superheroes to the obscure. 59 Passaic Street, Garfield, New Jersey. Don't forget to visit the haunted basement for some spooky deals. Necropolis, 59 Passaic Street, Garfield, New Jersey. Patronize, if you dare. And now, for our feature presentation, Cult of Con- Hey, I'm Billy from Billy's Midway Arcade in Hawthorne, and this is a really cool arcade full of old classic arcade games, video games, pinball machines, air hockey, shuffle bowling. Keep them all running for your enjoyment. Cult of Contempt Podcast is brought to you by Bath and Body Works Cucumber Melon Lotion. If this guy can use it, then everybody should. I am Inquisitor. I hunger for questions. Of course Mary Beth is gonna be there. We need a bass player, don't they? I am a pussy No, I don't know what she's wearing. You're a weirdo. Who can that be? Quizzy! No! You guys know we have all the back episodes of Cult of Contempt up on YouTube, right? YouTube.com slash Plan 10 Studios. Side effects may include insomnia, vomiting, or contempt. <laughs> Why are your glasses all fogged up? Because um, <laughs> it gets all hot and steamy in here. Jesus. No, I'm, I'm trying to go for like the the Horman glasses guy from uh, Heroes. You guys remember that show? Uh, yeah. yeah. But how do you how do you see out of foggy? It doesn't matter. Do, am I driving? Who cares? You look like the X-ray you're, glasses. You're guy. driving this podcast. <laughs> I'm driving this podcast into the ground. If I'm driving this podcast, you. Don't want me to fucking charge, dude. <laughs> Just let me know. I'm like, open to the events and, and Charles in charge. Charles in charge. 
of our days and our nights. Yeah, do you guys notice it's different in here? It's a little roomier? Yeah, I did it's, notice that. It's definitely cleaner. I, th I was noticing that too. What happened? I am gradually downsizing so much yeah. stuff uh, so that I don't have as much stuff because I have huh? too much stuff. Like my stereo. I didn't hook my stereo up because I like to listen to everything. They can't see this, but they're studio monitors. Right. So I mix my band, other bands, all kinds of shit. So I listen to everything through these because it gives me, uh, I know what everything is supposed to sound like in the car or wherever. I could listen to Green Day through this and it, it sounds a little weird because you hear more shit. Right. But for the sake of uh, mixing, it's it's great. Like right, it's very, right. very accurate. Gotcha. So, gotcha. So, like, I mean, you've been doing this for a while, because I, I saw you, like, giving away stuff for weeks and weeks, and I'm like, is this guy about to kill himself? Like, that's one of the signs. Like, I'm like, Paul, are you okay? Hey, no, I'm but not. He's fine, though. No, I'm not going to kill myself. Uh, my meds are probably going to kill me. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I, uh, All three of us had a hell of a week. Do you feel that, like, it's, only one I know, it's kind of odd that with certain things in your regular diet that you're vomiting so much from this drug where I've known cancer patients who haven't vomited as much. Is this drug, like, worse than No, chemo? you know what I think no, it was? you throw up a lot. It's right. actually fucking vitamin D. I was taking vitamin D, and every time I would take it, I was getting fucking, like, Nauseous. super, super sick. So it's and not your meds. I, and I stopped taking it. I don't think it's my fucking meds. I think it was the fucking vitamin D. What was the, the purpose of the vitamin D that they, that they told you to? They told me I'm deficient in vitamin D. You know what? I'll be fucking deficient. That's fine. Deficient. Drink some fucking milk or eat a I fish. I can't. I, I eat I fish like every day. All I eat is shrimp and fish sticks. <laughs> you, you're, out there in a, you're out there in a fucking, yeah, and two whoppers. That's how you eat fish. I'm a fisherman. You wonder why your body hates you, because you eat junk food all fucking That's day. That's not junk food. <laughs> I'm serious, dude. A hunter, <laughs> a hunter killed that. A hunter? A hunter. What fucking hunter? And Gordon's fisherman. Oh, get out of town. He can fucking drive. What, do you think he's just symbolic of fucking great fish? No, he's a real man. He's like Poseidon. Most of that shit comes like a, from a fish farm, I think. Okay. He is a, uh, a, like a corporate logo made of a conglomerate of various characters. Do not fucking <laughs> defile <laughs> the great name of Gordon's fisherman in this um, domicile. <laughs> So, um, I don't know where you get hunting from that, um, plus, um, Fishing. He's exactly. gathering, okay? It's hunter-gatherer. He's doing more of the gathering part. Yeah, he puts Honestly, aside... I wish we had B-roll of the guy from, uh, I know what you did last summer, so we can say he's the Gordon he, Fisherman. He puts a stupid net in the water and catches a bunch of shit that eats garbage, okay? I get it. But, uh, that's a delicacy. It's delicious. It is. It is delicious. I, I, I'm in the bag for fish these days. I, I like... I now order fish tacos. I, I used to be like, ah, oh, fuck that. I need beef all the time. But no. Fish, fish is good. Have you ever gone like deep sea fishing? Uh, I've gone crabbing in a boat in the ocean, but I've never gone like deep sea fishing. My friend Lane tells this great story that they're going for tuna on a on a night cruise all night, and they fight like fuck. But this one guy is inexperienced, and he pulls up a crab. Who fights like fuck? The fish or the, fish. Or the guys on the on the fish? Food? You're, you're fucking oh. fighting this fish. Oh, okay. Back and back and forth and stuff like that. So there's this. He pulls up a spider crab. You ever see one of these things? It's like yeah. Big. It looks like a basketball with legs. And, he, and, and the guy pulls it up on deck, and the fucking uh, a spider crab pulled out the hook, threw it down on the deck, and was like, fuck, let's go. Wow. And the first mate runs up behind it, kicks the thing, arcs it back into the ocean. But what a badass fucking crab. It pulled out the hook and was like, fuck you. There's, there's a great video <laughs> online where two people gave crabs, like, knives. <laughs> and they're just, like, circling each other with knives. <laughs> It's, it looks like there's like boat crew from my <laughs> like somewhere in the uh, island. There's a scene in The Simpsons where there were two monkeys like like fighting with knives on a boat, and they I, were all betting on. Them. I felt like there was crabs fighting with knives in my stomach the other night. When oh I, yeah, I, I, I heard you had a rough night. It was like me and you had like the horrible fucking Monday. Well, mine was so fucking embarrassing. I can tell that story, but I'm my Monday was first. manic. But that's a story for another time. It vomiting. I go. basically woke up. And like a panic at like 2.30 in the morning. I'm like, fuck. And I ran into the bathroom and I puked really bad and then I shit really bad. 
And then I was like, all right, I think I'm good. Yeah, that's when it, it's coming out of both I ends. brushed my teeth, I went and laid down. Fucking a half hour later, same thing. I went in, I puked. Jeez. I was fucking in bad shape. So I'm like, oh, it's all got to be out of me now. I can't, I can't possibly throw up anymore. Uh, nope. I could. Uh, and then I went back. Did you get to the point with the vial where you're just dry heaving? Yeah, oh, I was just dry heaving. It was horrible. But I, I was afraid to leave the toilet. So I, I just ran in there and I was just sitting in the corner in a bathroom in a hoodie like a fucking, like a hobo. <laughs> Wish like I could start a fire in my garbage can. And uh, sleeping on the bathroom floor like a drug addict. Yeah, and I and then I was I was so comfortable like like overslept like my I woke up I'm like oh fuck like I'm gonna be late for work uh, so I was just fucking late for work like they lived I just told them I'm like I ended up sleeping on my bathroom floor like it's a long story but uh, yeah so it was just like a shit fucking way to start the week and then I saw your shit. I fucking started a new job in Manhattan, so, you know, it's like a big... And they already job. hate you out the gate because you're from Jersey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, Jersey actually, trash. Everyone there is exceedingly nice, and, uh, and I know... face. I'm, I'm, known, I'm, I'm known executive, sir. You're speaking to an executive. Yeah, oh, you're How executive. How is that, sir? That's awesome. Uh, so I'm the research content manager. I'm managing the research content. So, you know, I get up early in the morning, I hardly eat anything, I hardly drink any water, I run out to the fucking uh, shuttle. I didn't sleep that well that night because I'm nervous it's a new job. I take the shuttle to the train, and then I walk like, you know, for 15 minutes, like five city blocks and like that, get right there um, early and stuff like that. And the HR guys going over all the stuff for hours, still haven't eaten or drank anything. And then I go to another meeting, then all of a sudden I had this fucking migraine, right? So I finally eat something. I had like this like fucking protein bar that I've had in my book bag for I don't know how long. I probably shouldn't have eaten it. And then I finally had some water and I got a fucking migraine. I think they have like the Advil there. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, it's my first day. I'm in a fucking meeting with this guy. They have the speaker. We're trying to hear what the guy's saying. I'm like fucking rocking. I'm sweating. My whole fucking hair is, I must have been pale. Like, Paul, my boss, is like just sitting on the other side. Oh, that's cool. You have two bosses named Paul now? <laughs> yeah. He wish you were my boss. So, and, and he's like, um, like the coolest guy. He's like super chill. So I'm like, oh, fuck. You know, I'm not going to be able to live through this. Like, this headache is so bad. It feels like a fucking beetle is just beating its way out of my skull. It starts to turn my stomach, and I'm like, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to fucking make it. What am I going to do? Should I ask him to go home on my first day? I've only been here four hours. It's the middle of the day. So I run to the fucking bathroom, but it's a one stall, and somebody's in there. Then I run to the unisex bathroom. Somebody's fucking in there. Then I run back in. I tried to take the bag out of the garbage underneath the fucking towel dispenser and they tuck it in the back, like all fancy, so it's fucking stuck. So then I turned to the garbage can, tried to pull the plastic bag, that one's fucking tucked under and stuck too. I go back to the fucking one with the dispenser, I just threw up on the sink. And then I turn around, open the garbage can, I threw up the rest in the fucking garbage can. Oh. And I'm like, this is just a fucking mess. So I like kind of cleaned up the sink area a little bit. You know, I didn't have any mess on me, thank God. And then I just walked out, and I'm like, uh... And then the funny thing was, was that the guy who was in the stall was the HR guy. So he came out, he's like, I felt so bad. I was on the toilet at the time. I'm like, I gotta go home. He's like, you gotta go home. He's like... So, you do have to go home, because what if it is a stomach virus? You would be in danger. So then I had to walk five blocks all the way back to fucking Penn Station. Yeah, it sucks. The train is there, thank God. But then when I get out, you know, the fucking shuttle's not going to come for like another hour or something like that. I call an Uber. The Uber guy cancels the fucking thing because he doesn't know where to pick me up. I don't know why. I'm fucking glad I'm going to have in Bloomfield. It's like the most... So I fucking walked home from there. Passed out, this, that, and the other thing. And the next you probably day, sweated out if there was something viral in you walking that. Fucking, you probably just. I think it's just because I didn't sleep well, I didn't drink enough water, I didn't have enough food in me, and my system was just like, fuck this. Like, fuck you. Were they you know? cool about it though? I or? came in the next day, and like, everybody's cool about it, but some people are like, oh, I heard you had a bad day yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, this fucking thing, but you know what? I like those fucking people that say that shit. I'm like, this dude's cool. Yeah, All right, yeah. yeah. You break your balls about it. It's like, you know, like, shit happens. Like, if I saw you, I would have been like, what's up, Chuck? 
be like, yeah, all right, eh, eh. So I'm like, all right, I'll fucking take the hit. But, you know, they were exceedingly nice. That's good. So uh, today I put in a solid piece of work, so I feel pretty good about it now. Wait, um, but you today, took a jump in the break room? A solid piece of work. What else is new? Yeah. But today when I got back, I didn't know where to pick up the fucking shuttle. And then I crossed the street, and the shuttle is on the side of the street I was on, and there's fucking traffic. And I push the button, and then the fucking thing is gone by the time I get there. So I just, I'll walk home. It's only 10 or 15. It starts pouring. I got no fucking umbrella. I get home. I'm completely soaked. I'm laughing in the rain, walking down the street like a fucking joker. Yeah, like a psychopath. People are, like, avoiding me. I'm having the best time for some reason. <laughs> I felt like the five-year-old jumping in puddles and stuff like that. People are scattering. I'm glad. I, I like this new film. This childlike <laughs> whimsy. But when an adult acts that work. way, yeah, it's like horrifying to other adults. Like, oh, fuck. Come here, kids. <laughs> Mommy, what's wrong with him? Just don't look at him. Don't make eye contact. <laughs> You're getting it. I'm getting something. You're getting it. That's the way I live my life. I just don't give a shit anymore. <laughs> yeah, the amount of fucks that I give is far less now than it was six months ago. I, I gave no fucks this... I, I've had a crazy just few days. I uh, I ran out of um, medical marijuana on Friday night. Oh, my I, God. I, I, I was out. So I was like, ah, like, I'll hit up the guy, whatever. Like, he comes through. No, he's not coming through. He told me he's not going to come through until Saturday on Friday. So I was like, whatever. I'll see him tomorrow. Right. Uh, now he's not coming through till Sunday, so I'm like fucking. I think I hate that shit. Bite. Well, no, it, it's all right. It shit happens. You know, he's got a life too. But true. It's just like, god damn it. So yeah. I'm on the quest. But first, I have to go to Dunkin' Donuts <laughs> um, to get breakfast because I have a headache. Right. And so I go to Dunkin' Donuts, the one across. I have one like right across the street. I go there. It, it's full of assholes, like, out the door, like, oh, that's like, oh, fuck this. I guess, like, a baseball game let out oh, or something. I that's the worst. There's a million old people in there. Oh. It was like, it was like a, uh, I don't know, like a nursing home. The one by me, yeah, Bella Labs, like a retirement village. Yeah, they just congregate in there. They I don't congregate. even think they leave. I think that's just their home now. You walk in there, it just looks like a bunch of Q-tips hanging around. Yeah. So then I'm like, <laughs> you know what, fuck it. So I come back, I get my car, I go to the one up the street. Uh -huh. Like, yeah, whatever. I find a good parking space, like, right across the street from it. So I'm already facing the right direction. I have to deal with the fucking parking lot. Right. Go in. Stand in line. Fucking all three people in front of me. It was like they just decided to look at the menu when they got to the fucking, <laughs> to the counter. Like, oh, what can I get you? <laughs> That's it's like you've been standing here fucking nine minutes. Like, I'm counting them because I want to be home fucking trying to get drugs. And I'm to say everybody there, dude. So, so finally. Excuse me, we fucking order. We're trying to get some goddamn drugs. So finally, I get up there and I get my shit and get out. Whatever. I got my crap. Go ahead. I have the, the cross walk, you know, with green light that tells me the little signal says walk. Is it a little dude? No, it's like a fucking, it just says walk, so. Oh, that's unfortunate. So, a little guy. there's a, a funeral procession going by. Oh, no. But I decide to test the limits of what's acceptable, and, because they're, they're not supposed to stop, but I'm in the crosswalk. Right. And the thing is telling me to cross. Right. And that's... After an aggravating, like, half-hour affair of trying to buy fucking breakfast, all I wanted to be was either dead or back by my car so I could drive home. Right. So I just decided to walk through it, and boy, were they displeased <laughs> to slam on the brakes. And I thought about it, and I'm like, that's fucking bullshit anyway, right. a funeral procession. Like, what happens? Like, if they don't get the body to the hole quick enough, it's going to close up? <laughs> Like, I never understood it. Like, the hole or the body? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, he ain't going nowhere. Yeah, who gives a shit? Like, right. he can wait. Like, I got shit to do. I'm alive, man. Like, plus, it's a cross. I don't know, is that fucked right up to, like, walk in front of a funeral procession? Some people think that, I guess, you need to respect the body or something like that. But to me, it's just an empty shell. The person is not there anymore. So what's yeah, the Yeah, funerals are for the fucking living. Exactly. Dead. The and people get all bent out of shape. 
Now, I have bad experience with processions, not necessarily a funeral procession, but I had the privilege of visiting the uh, the old town of New Orleans in Louisiana. I gotta say it, New Orleans. New Orleans. Yeah, I fucked that up. All right, swing and a miss. But anyway, so Ali and I and, and my buddy Dave, uh, my poker buddy Dave, were in a Baptist cab. And it occurred to me that, like, this town, nobody's in a fucking hurry, man. In the Northeast, <laughs> everybody's in a fucking hurry. Oh, yeah. And how I knew this was, we're in the cab, we get stopped at a light, light turns green, then all of a sudden, there's like a band and a bunch of people with umbrellas going doop a doop doop <laughs> across the walk. And I was like, oh, how charming, local color, this is great. This is right. great. Right. And uh, so we get to the next light, it fucking happens again. After the third one, Allie and I are looking at each other, and I say to the guy, hey, uh, is there an alt route? Mm, he just mumbled something. So and at one point, we just, like, got out of the cab. Dave had his hotel. Allie and I did, like, an Airbnb kind of thing. So we had, for the same price as the hotel, we had, like, an apartment with a dryer and all this shit. Cool. Two bathrooms. We shared with Dennis and I. So, uh, but we were two blocks away from our place, and we had to get through a fucking, and it was around St. Patrick's Day, so there was some fucking Irish parade with firemen going on. So there were, like, beads flying around, and I got all my suitcases. I'm paranoid about my money, because if I have more than $100, I'm really paranoid. But, um, so, yeah, I can see that going bad. Um... Anyway, so I'm running through, I'm running through. Some girl, for some reason, touches my cheek, and I got, like, my bag with my money, and I'm like, get the fuck away from me. Because <laughs> I'm in Sin City, you know? I don't want to get robbed. I didn't know. So we finally get to the apartment. But then we don't know the fucking code. So Allie had to go through her bag to find her phone, to find what the code was that we got from the... When we finally got in, they gave us, like, three bottles of fucking wine, all this fucking food, there was nice. fucking cereal. It was great. Awesome. Airbnb is the way to go. But the point of the story is uh, New Orleans traffic sucks with the crosswalks and the dancing. But Airbnb is awesome. I, it wasn't Airbnb. It was another company like Airbnb. I'm using Airbnb as a term like Kleenex or Xerox or... Uh, Play-Doh. Play-Doh. Legos. Q-tips. Band-Aids. The corporations don't like that. Yeah, because they think anything will do. Yeah, like, Jello Biafra. I'm sure Jello wasn't thrilled that he stole, you know, their fucking. Uh, um, well, he, he wasn't the only one. There was that band Green Jelly. Yeah, Green Jello. Yeah, Green Jello, and then they had to change it to Green Jelly. The cassette that says Green Jello is actually. Worth I remember bucks. that band. Like I remember them in the '90s when I was a kid. That was like. Hey, my friend's like older brother. Big strong, yeah. No, my friend's like older brother like showed us them. He's like, yo, did you guys ever hear? He showed us that. He showed us Danzig, Ugly Kid Joe. Nice. Like all that kind all of at like, the same time. Crazy like, shit. Yeah. This is great rock music. Danzig and Ugly Kid Joe. There's so much like, dude. He was into all kinds of shit, but it was just like, I don't know, fucking. I I got like such a musical knowledge. It's like you like typo negative like. Right. Who the fuck shows eight-year-olds typo negative? Well, I, I don't know. As far as music history goes, the 90s is really interesting because there was sort of a free... The metal thing was going out, and then there was kind of this free-for-all where there were all kinds of different music going on, and then everybody latched on to the grunge thing. But there was, like, a lot of, like, retro 70s stuff. There was a lot of power pop. There was, like, fans like Well, Jellyfish I even think and, about after that, too. That same thing happened kind of with, like, metal. Like, you had, like... Just a million different kind of like goth metal and fucking yeah. like industrial and like shit metal that got like really combined like a fetish combined yeah. like rap and rock like Linkin Park that yeah. type of shit like well, the they radio did shit that, that shit ten hate. years prior and there's a great soundtrack for this this movie called Judgment Night. Did you ever see Judgment Night? Fucking Emilio Estevez uh, and yeah. Coon Jr. Yeah, and Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary's the villain. He's fucking yeah. great. Oh, yeah. and the, the, the what's his name? Flavor Last. It's like one of the gangsters. Okay. Everlast? Everlast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Judgment Night. So, uh, anyway, that soundtrack had a rap band and a rock band, and they would do a song together. Right. There's a great fucking Faith No More track called Another Body Murder. It's yes. one of the cool... Like, after that, I was done with rap metal. I was like, you can't get any better than this. Onyx is on there doing uh, Slam with, uh, was it Anthrax? I forget who it was. I think so. Anthrax did, like, rap shit. Yeah, yeah Anthrax did On The Man back yeah. in 1985, 86. I mean, yeah. they were way out of the curve on that. They would wear Public Enemy shirts. That's why um, Daryl, Daryl, uh, no, um, uh, Dr. Dre, no, fuck, what's his name? The guy was on Air America. DMC. 
no. Um, I don't know what Air America is. Uh, it was a liberal radio um, channel. Uh, Chuck D. Chuck, Chuck D. D. Yeah. Uh, he had a show with uh, the chick from MSNBC. But anyway, uh, Rachel Maddow. Oh. Uh, Chuck D saw that Anthrax was wearing Public Enemy shirts, and they weren't getting any airplay. Yeah. And they had this they had this chip on their shoulder, like, uh, mainstream doesn't want the black voice getting out there. So, but then when they saw these these guys wearing their shirt, they were like, all right. And they went in and, cool. I don't know, Chuck D's fucking legit. And uh, oh, yeah. he put together a band with the guy from Raising Against Machine recently to do like a lot of anti-Trump stuff. And it, yeah. it did somewhat bad, eh, mixed reviews. I, but, I don't know, I, but a lot of it's heavy. A lot of it's rooted in rock. I'm kind of curious to D. see the Rage Against the Machine that's out now with the Cypress Hill guys, I think. Oh, yeah. Sing for it, right? Yeah. No, 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 that's that's Chuck D's band. The one of the guys from Cypress Hill is in it. Right. It's called like the, it's a, it's like an all-star band. It's like Chuck D, uh, Morello, of course. Right. One of the guys from um, <clears throat> that band, uh, who's Cuban, by the way, who was on NPR talking about Cuban actors. It was weird. Like, I didn't realize all that. Um, I forget his name though. And uh, yeah, yeah. So and there's one other guy. I think somebody's spinning. And I don't think it's Everlast, but somebody like that. But, Rage Against yeah. the Machine. I mean, yeah, they had some great songs, but really the guitarist carried that whole band. Agreed. And it's funny you bring up Rage Against the Machine. So Ali got this really great cover gig, being in this cover band called Reservoir Dog. So unfortunately, they spell it D A W G S. Ugh. But anyway, it's a, it was a, pay, a paying gig is a paying gig. And uh, I like the dude who got into the gig is a really great guy, but he's he's legit. He like writes for a guitar magazine, gives lessons. Oh, he yeah. makes a living being a musician. Respect. Good for him. So uh, he gave Ali a gig. She made 200 bucks for about, I don't know, eight hours of work, travel to travel door to door. It's great. And yeah. uh, but she had all these songs to do. And... Um, you know, being in a cover band with Allie, I know there's certain songs she never wanted to do. She had to do the songs she never wanted to do. Like, uh, I'm just a girl, you want to know. Uh, and one of them was killing the name of. And she didn't get it right away. He came over to, like, work on a couple songs with her, show her some stuff. And it was going well. And, she, and he was like, I'll just, I'll cover it. And she's like, no, 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 no. That Allie would never let that happen. So Allie practiced that song for fucking four days. All I heard in the house yeah, it was killing yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. But as far as a piece of music go, and it is a lot of Tom Morello, so there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. He really carried bands. Zach De La Roche had the kind of voice, nine out of ten people say, eh, I can only listen to him so many for so long. And I think that, that was the death of Rage Against the Machine. They didn't have a good singer. No, yeah. the death of Rage Against the Machine was just their fear of fucking selling out, and I think they just stopped getting along. I think it was like... One of those things where they just needed to kind of like call it quits. I always just thought that like Zach was was the odd man out. The other three got along and continued to do stuff. Yeah, they did Audio Slave. Audio Slave. Like, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, Audio Slave was good. I like those songs. Yeah. No? Audio Slave was fucking. Yeah, that was good. I thought, I thought it, was good. it was. When I first heard it, I was it, disappointed. When I, I liked first, Coaches, but. No, listen, I heard Audio Slave when it was like fucking. My friend's like, yo, I got the demos of uh, Chris Cornell with the fucking. Rage guys, like they didn't have a name for it yet, right? And like you just, they were like fucking oh, demo yeah, like tracks, valley, like yeah. they were they were recorded. I mean, they sounded right. good. They were produced, but like not great, you know? Right. It was fucking. It was awesome. It was like kind of what they came up with, and like right. it sounded like it. Like right. wow, this is what the guy from Soundgarden would sound like singing for Rage Against the Machine. Like it was a good fucking. That's singer. a fucking. Yeah. Do I like what it ended up becoming? In the, in the end no I, I like the first album like yeah, I didn't really catch on like listen to the rest of Audio Slave they got derivative after the first album the first album was good but I respect it it's like right. ah, that's like a good crew of dudes like making right. music and even this I thought the same thing too with uh, the Guns N' Roses guys did the albums with the Velvet Revolver Velvet Revolver yeah, I was like too. that's cool like, that, that's like Scott Weiland is beautiful Scott Weiland is like a guy I, I always felt like notoriously is not a great singer so really? Yeah, Scott Weiland's like okay, but He's I, okay. I don't think he was like a great, like powerful singer. No, me neither. A um, little bit of a handful to work with as well. Yeah, Which there was a there was a period in the '90s where I was cleaning dorm rooms at fucking at William Patterson, listening to K Rock, 
and then K-Rock makes this announcement. If you've seen Scott Whalen on the New York metro area, he was fucking missing. They were <laughs> looking for him on fucking K-Rock. I kid you not. That's crazy. Awesome. He disappeared, was trying to uh, run away from some like drug charges, then he goes back to jail, and then all of a sudden he's coming out in the news talking about the pocket pussy he made in prison out of a rubber glove and... and Man, he's like, man. Yeah, it was just like he's out of control, like that guy. Like, yeah, he was like a bad junkie. And it was like one of those things too. It's like, man, if that guy wasn't in a band, he'd just be a junkie. Like, there, there would be. And you see the same thing about Johnny Thunders, though. Don't you want your rock stars to be a little bit out of control? Yeah, Isn't the point kind of rebellion, slightly and shit like, like that. You, you also want to see them fucking, you know live well like I don't want to see anybody get so yeah. fucked up on drugs just because it's entertaining to me or show true, themselves true. 10 years later after the success like Cornell and a bunch of the others yeah like I feel like bad so for Cornell because I thought he finally you know found peace no you know what man like all those guys I, I think I don't know I can't quantify it but I, I, I would say the reason I'll never have kids is because it's like this fear of like like loss and like just this like that like I feel like looms over people like especially depressed people like they look around and they should be happy like I have beautiful kids a beautiful wife you know he had kids yeah I think they yeah. him, I think yeah. Chester Bennington did oh, yeah. I think he, I think there's like you almost people almost feel guilty feeling happy like so misery is the human condition? Is that what you're I don't know. For some people. Yeah, I think for some people. I think for people that are a certain type of depressed, for sure, like, no matter how good it is, they're always going to, there's always going to be this, like, innate fear of, like, it's something's going to go wrong. Like, I, I can't deal with this. Like, I so, a little bit something, I can really. something's going to come out or something's going to happen. Whatever it is, it's like there's, like, a... a like a skeleton, like it always just nags at people. Like, yeah, I think there's a anxiety. There's also kind of a self hatred. There might be something of an imposter syndrome. Like, do I really deserve this? Kind of. Yeah, it's like that. weird when like. What do they call that? Like the syndrome. imposter syndrome. Like when the rich when and you, famous people. The imposter. Okay. Imposter. Yeah. That's that's actually so like it's like a side just, effect of becoming famous. Right. You become famous or you get some sort of success. You don't even have to become famous. If you get some sort of success in your life and you feel like it's undeserving or you know you you don't you have like low self esteem and stuff like that, you feel like an imposter instead of yourself. That could be a very uncomfortable psychological position to be in. Yeah, it's like you feel like that's not really you. Right. It's like yeah. you shouldn't have made that or you shouldn't have got there. Like you know, even though it was by your own effort. You know, like even I can see that like with stand up okay. comics. Too, and like, for sure. you know, you're this persona, like, right? I'm this persona. Chappelle. I mean, that's the prime example of that, right? I mean, he, he got his big payday and he freaked out and went to Africa. I think he was doing that show for a while before he. Uh, no, 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 no. He did his. He was filling his contract. Once he filled his contract, they renegotiated. That's when he got mad money, right. money he'd never seen before in his life, money he never imagined he'd get. And he break that. And he. And he Freaked out, went to Africa, and then produced some weird block party film. You think he freaked out, or he just said, "Fuck this"? Could be. You know, like it's. it's I, I don't. He he talked on Inside the Actors Studio, and I believe he was kind of defending it. Is why am I crazy for just walking away from this? Like that's dismissive. That's not right. That's see. All I, I think that's the ultimate stand-up comic move. In a way, is like is to be offered the king's ransom. You know what? No, here it is. Here's the thing: is like Chappelle. At the end of the day, he acted. He did all this shit. Dave Chappelle is a stand-up comic. When you're that big, and you know you're doing sketch comedy, but really at his core, he's like a stand-up comic. That's what he does now. That's what he likes to do. Uh, so I think it's like one of those things: like you disappear for a while, and when you're on a fucking huge TV show, everyone. Everyone's gonna question, like, oh, where's Dave Chappelle? Where's Dave Chappelle? And when he did start reemerging, he would just do fucking like little sets at like the comedy store, you know, like just hone his craft again. Like it, it seemed like almost like he got so far away from doing what he wanted to do that he needed to start over in a way. See, I heard it different. 
different. I heard that, you know, he he really loved the Chappelle show, and then they dumped a bunch of money on him, and they were like, we want need you to change this, that, and the third, and he was like, fuck this, I'm out. Well, exactly. I thought that's kind of how but it But I think, it, I think he, he wanted to, pro I, I don't know if that he really wanted to do the Chappelle show for more than one season. Right. I think it was something cool, like a cool idea he it had. It's a fucking gem. I mean, that show's amazing. I can watch the um, Chappelle show anytime. I cannot years. listen to Prince without thinking of him making pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> always picture him with the pig and the face and oh my god the, the, it was the um, Eddie Murphy's brother's stories that Charlie was one of the Charlie, Charlie Murphy's stories Charlie Murphy stories. <laughs> Charlie Murphy. cocaine's a hell of a drug <laughs> I love when him and Wayne Brady were like yes. going oh my god does Wayne, Wayne, Wayne Brady need to choke a bitch yeah <laughs> My eyes popped out of my head. <laughs> yeah, that was, was like, like America's that. like son, Wayne Brady. <laughs> right. Saying, like, most but the respect for Wayne Brady for doing that. Wayne Brady, I think, was a comic too. I'm pretty sure. Probably. Like back yeah. in, I'm pretty sure he started in stand up. Like same thing with like uh, what's his name? Bob Saget. No, I wasn't gonna say him. I was gonna say but he, he, he from uh, very, that very guy, Howie Mandel. Like, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, like all those dudes. Oh, he used to swear yeah. all the time. Everybody yeah. pivoted from comedy to do like other bullshit that paid the bills. The, all the all the <coughs> rock star comics of the '80s would be on beginner uh, comedy specials on HBO in the late '70s, early '80s that would, were always like hosted or produced by Rodney. Yeah, uh, Rodney had his finger on everybody. Sandler, Rock, he all had of Kevin them. Brennan. They did one. Yeah. They, there's so many good fucking. Sam Kinison too. Uh, yeah. Well, Kinison and uh, and Dice were part of the night show at this place at, at Rodney's. Mm -hmm. Danger it was, Fields. Yeah, yeah right. Danger Fields. Yeah. I know the comics always refer to it as Rodney's. They never call it Danger Fields. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, maybe that's a thing. But, um, yeah, and then he was like, okay, this is the late night show. He, he just went with them. I mean, there was a lot of homophobia and some, some fucked up shit. Maybe that's why he better. You know what? It, but that's, no, nah, that's just the time, so. I, I, I think. Know. But I think, do you notice that, like, I don't know, Kinnison and Dice's comedy are dated and. Yeah, and are not even regarded God, as. You know what, though? Dice, like Dice is like a fucking. It's like a, a, a character. Like once you realize, like, oh, he's not really calling like, uh, like disabled people, fucking like cripples and retards and shit. Like he's doing it as as if he was a character, like in a movie. Like that's the thing. That's why I can look at Dice and I laugh my balls off because just being able to say that shit with a straight face is like I couldn't do it. Like how Dice can, you know? Like the shit that Dice will say is. It, it just like blows. I have less of a problem with him and more of a problem with Sam Kennison. I, I, I like Sam Kennison for the most part. I mean, rock guy, um, funny in, in uh, Back to School. He was hysterical in Back to School. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, I think that's where he really started, got his big break, but uh, also Rodney. Um, but no, but like Sam Kennison made it seem like every fucking gay guy in the universe wanted to fuck him. And that was not the case. And fucking Scott Thompson, all the kids in the hall, a smoking a cigarette, said, "You know, like, yeah, I want a, I want a fat, smelly, sweaty, fat guy who swears all the time. Help oh, sign me up. Swears and yells. It's fucking classic. At least, it was nice that, that you had somebody to represent the gay community to fight back. It was kind of cool. Kinnison was just fucking with them. Kinnison knew better than that. And all he do is do blow and drink and fuck horrors. He didn't really give oh my a God. shit. There's a great story in the Billy Idol book." Kennison was apparently a really jealous mind. Oh, really? And uh, Billy Idol got too close to his girlfriend, and <laughs> he freaked I got out. A little too close to his girlfriend. And uh, <laughs> he freaked out, yelled at him. I don't know. But then um, the hotel felt bad about the incident because I guess Sam Kennison made a scene. So they offered Billy Idol something. So he, Billy Idol took like two front row seats to see Sinatra. Oh, I thought it was going to be to see Sam Kennison. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Um, uh, give me two front row uh, seats to his show. I don't know. I mean, like, if you had to, if you had to rank a top 100 comics of all time, would Sam kind of make the top 100? I don't think so. The top 100, yeah. The top 10, oh, wait, no. No, that's what I was thinking. Top 10, yeah. The yeah. top 100, maybe. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to start wide and then and then break. I would say, I'll tell you, I've been listening to George Carlin all week. He's probably number one, one of my heroes. He's number one, and he had the fucking the best thing that I I ever heard. I probably heard it before, but. He said, uh, like, leave the symbols to the symbol-minded. Yeah. And I just thought, I'm like, oh, my God, that is, like, fucking the most genius thing. Brilliant. That I've ever heard. 
guy was like a philosopher. Uh, he, oh, yeah, yeah, he'd do a lot of wordplay, but he'd also have these like these observational humor. Like, I had this little book in my stocking one year, and it was all these kind of, uh, the Carl and Brain drops. He, he made this, uh, yeah, something like that. And uh, he made this joke. He made this observation about guys go to the bathroom, they pee. They don't have anything on their hands, but they wash their hands for appearances. I don't like this bullshit of appearances because you know it's not like we're in fucking Calcutta and I got you know AIDS or anything, you know. And I was like, it's kind of funny, but you know, but I still wash my hands after I pee for appearances. But I always think about it when I do it. Though. If you dig into his background, he was a consummate professional who would work on. I mean, he had rapid fire fucking. Yeah, he's material. he's basically. And he would work on it and work on he, it. And he work said on that it. no, he said that he's a writer that memorizes his material. Right. He's not a writer that writes his material and then performs. I forget what it was. Or, it's like carefully crafted. It's like the backward. It's it's more backwards than comedy. Like right. most stand-up comedy, he's much, much, much more prepared. For sure. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think he like appeared on the Ed Sullivan show. Yeah, he was oh, around yeah. for a long he, time. I mean, like he used to do these like little funny bits of like you know broadcast television and do kind of clean stuff in the beginning. Of he did the hippy dippy weatherman. Yeah, yeah. No, that's. Oh my God, you're wow. You're a big. Uh, I'm a huge guy. George Carlin. I wish that he was still alive. Oh yeah, me too. I I will especially yeah. now yeah. Yeah. with what's going on in the White House and what's going on with because he would Carlin even everything. Handle, yeah, he would even handle handle both sides. He was getting really angry at the end though, but it was kind of like funnier in a way. <laughs> He's getting like real bitter and angry. And Allie got like to see him at the Stardust yeah, his, he's, before they closed the Stardust, and she said he was bright. I he had him, this. I saw him at the State Theater in New Brunswick, and he was absolutely bright. I was listening to like an hour of him, and there was like this radio interview um, where he's talking about basically he's like, I don't advocate it, but uh, the only way to like fix society is violence and bloodshed. <laughs> And he just like goes through this whole fucking spiel for like like a minute on this radio show. He's like, and like I said, I don't advocate it, but violence and bloodshed. But he could, he could kind of go low brown and high brown. Yeah. But he could also be funny without swearing, which, which I always thought was Cosby's greatest gift. You know what? He swore a lot more than I I remember when I was watching. I have, probably haven't watched George Carlin in like. Probably 10, 15 years. Like, I went through like a huge George Carlin phase. I had all the fucking shit, the records and crap. Yeah. And like, gradually, like, I gave away my DVDs. I'm like, oh, you'll like this, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, I, and I like revisited a lot of stuff. And like, he, he says a lot of things, fuck them, like, all yeah. the time. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck them. He did a lot of great stuff um, about politics. And dude, his bit, uh, baseball, about he's like, he sacrificed. Like, his, baseball players are pussies. His bit about the environment is like, and, and the world, he's like, the Earth's fine. It's been here four billion years. What's We've right? been here what? And he like, <laughs> and he starts talking about how like the, the Earth basically wants plastic. The Earth That's loves right. plastic. Like, it's just this whole fucking spiel. And it's, and he said he has a great point, like, it's not about saving the planet. It's about, it's selfishness, it's human selfishness, about people having a nice place to live. Like, it's, it, they don't give a fuck about the planet, they just don't want to see it die, basically, like. Right, no, yeah, it's not, like, they're not going to kill the planet. Like, watch, you mean, like, they don't want to see it die? They, the no, it's like, they, they really don't give a fuck about changing anything about their lives to, to make the planet better. They just want to make you think that they do. Because they don't want to look at it, you know. They, they, like they, they don't have any practical fucking answer. They don't fucking, they, you know, they don't make any changes. It's just like they just they just harp about it, and it's fucking. It's, it hasn't changed. It it's hasn't changed since the seventies, really. Uh, the environmental thing pisses me off because. But what we were saying was is that we're not going to kill the earth. The earth is still going to be here. We're just going to kill ourselves. Yes, we're temporary. That's that's what that's what it is. We, we're, the earth is just going to shake us off like a bad cold and move on. Yeah, he was a brilliant, brilliant guy, and nothing has changed. Yeah, I I think he's a solid choice for number one. But it's it's like those. I don't know, it's like those guitar player lists. Like, there's, you know, usually it's Jimmy Page or Eric Clapton, they flip-flop them. 
Because I think with, with Carlin, I don't think there's anybody close to him. I, I would I mean, have Dick Dale at the top of my fucking... Or, yeah, probably Dick Dale at the best of my top, top I, player list. He usually makes the top 10, top 20, I don't know. I'm obsessed with those lists. I, I know it's a waste of time. It's, argue, it's I, talking about... You know argue, what? I like but, those lists is like... I like to watch him and just see, like, uh, maybe I've never heard of the guy in the guy, like, yeah. 70 or whatever. Yeah, there's a guy that always shows up, uh, Ry Cooter. He was a studio guy that played various things and was in guitar player magazines. And, Country oh. and blues, that guy, right? I think so, yeah. Huh. Um, Trey Anastasio qu- uh, quotes him as, a, as an influence. Um, uh, oh, I definitely won't listen to him now. <laughs> <laughs> say what you want about Trey Anastasio. He has a distinct tone. He sounds like nobody else. I love when a guitar player Say what you will about Trey Anastasio. He has a huge penis. <laughs> <laughs> no, he has this distinct tone. And, like, when you hear his guitar, you know it's him. Same thing with Slash, same thing That's with... That's how I know to run the other direction. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's like, like I keep getting asked to go to fish shows, and I say, no thanks, I'm good. But, like, I appreciate it for what it is. I think I like the same joke about the dead as I do about fish. What did the fucking stoner say when he stopped doing drugs? This band sucks. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of good fish tunes, I guess. Why does it have to take 25 minutes, though? It, they, they're all jazz nerds. That's what it is. It's just a they're bunch all of jazz nerds. It's a bunch of hippies that want to do drugs. And just party. I like that part. What no, but why that? can't it be a cool band? Why can't fucking Slayer be playing? <laughs> why does it have to be this hippie, drippy, fucking tie-dye bullshit? I like hippie girls. I just don't want them to go through the fish concert. I just don't want to smell their pussy. <laughs> Weed smells great. Pussy, not so much. <laughs> I don't know. Don't I carry party. hippie pussy. Don't a lot of them use, like, <laughs> cannabis-based oils and patchouli soaps on their cooch? I don't know. I stay or away from that. That <laughs> Hippie girls You've never, like, never been with a hippie girl? Hippie girl. girls are, like, fucking kryptonite. Come on, me. Like, I just stay away from them. Like, <laughs> I've like, never banged a hippie girl. Just on a lark. Uh, a hippie girl? I don't know. Anybody listening that's a hippie, did I bang you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was never into hippie girls. I was always into, like... I don't know, fucking. I guess psychopaths. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, like the goth baby, yeah, like uh, goth Betty girls. Page chicks. Yeah, yeah. I like all goth girls and just like. Oh, the Betty Page chicks with their fucking little haircut. No, no bangs. Cut. No bangs. They, no, they look like fucking. Uh, I like chicks that look like vampire. Like. Oh yeah. Ah. You know, like that. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was like my thing back in my twenties. Yep. Um. In my 30s, my tastes are refined, and uh, my life is a lot better now that, like... The two whopper a day man says his life is refined. <laughs> yeah, two whoppers a day, it's healthy. <laughs> dude, I'm down like 15 <laughs> pounds. I'm doing a vegetable, dude. <laughs> There's tomatoes on it and a pickle. You know what I thought was hilarious was that uh, you were arguing about some Al Gore shit or something like that, and you're like, Al Gore stole water all from me. I'll yeah, never be Al Gore. Uh, well, you know what? And I was like, this guy's body is killing him on the best medication ever in the history of mankind, and he thinks he's going to rule water world. Yeah, I'm I, I built an awesome fucking boat, Phil. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah, you're going to drive it in a wheelchair? <laughs> yeah. It's accessible. Okay? Because I thought of the future. Nice. I don't know, that was baller, man. That was sick. <laughs> wow, Phil's on. I, no, I wasn't just... big today. Phil's got to carry the show. Phil is carrying the show, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Phil's turning red. Yeah. Right? He's redder than Jim today. Like, it's a major. And that doesn't happen very often. Really? He has this it's childlike nice. whimsy now. I, I like, do. I like Phil 2.0. Nice. I don't know Phil what happened. Phil 2.0. Phil 2. Phil gets an upgrade. Woohoo! Speaking of upgrades, I saw the Chucky movie. Nice. Did you like it? I did like it, but there were a few scenes that I thought that were lacking, and a few scenes that I thought were amazing. I think the the scene, like one of the most amazing scenes, I think, is when the asshole boyfriend is on the ladder, and if you're 
I don't know. Maybe you should cover your radio if you haven't seen it yet. But uh, and Chucky, like, like he's like wrapped in the Christmas lights because the Christmas lights are all fucked up. And Chucky knocks over the ladder, and you see his legs break in slow motion. Yeah. And as he starts crawling, you hear like an engine start, and he's wrapped in the Christmas lights. And the fucking machine. I don't know what it was. What was, was it like a a tiller? Tiller? That was like a uh, a fucking snowblower, I think. Oh, um, he just takes it kind of makes no sense. It. Yeah. Yeah, that that was a fucking awesome kill. That was. Awesome I thought kill. I thought a lot of the kills in that were. I, I dug a lot of the kills in that. The the fucking drone. The drone cutting the guy's throat. I thought was cool. I wanted to see all the dolls activate and just take a whole crowd of people apart. That's kind of I feel like what they're leading towards. Yeah, I thought Once the bears again, were cool. You have a horror film where the murderer. It makes sense why he's killing because he's. But you know what? It you makes have sense. the origin of it, which a lot of you people have the shit origin on of it. for doing with Halloween. But Halloween is stupid for doing that. Because you already had an origin for him. You already knew he was a serial killer, or he was being chased by the cops in the, the OG Child's Play. Like, sure. He did have, like, a motivation, and then right. they throw in the booth. this thing, you have basically a child, a complete that, child. That's what I liked about it, because mm-hmm. I think it made me think more of, like, you know, like, people... Something like that could take things the wrong way. Like right. the AI, like that's a fucking scary thought. I mean, it's basically Terminator. Well, it had safety controls on it, and they fired that guy in Vietnam. The guy, he slapped him in the face and, and he, shit. He took all the fucking controls off, so this thing would go nuts, which is a great storyline. But then the guy commits suicide for some unknown reason. Because he knows what he's done. He knows what. Does he really know what he's done? This is the first time an AI thing. I like that it started with the commercial. I like that part. The suicide I thought was a little bit over the top. This guy could get a job somewhere else. How the hell did he know what was going to happen? Well, they could have tied it to him. Yeah, they probably could have tied it to him. You think about it. It's like a chip that's being programmed from a workstation. It probably has like a serial number that implants. It's like, oh, they know this guy. Shut all this shit off. Yeah, I thought that whole idea was stupid. That in a factory, right. they could just turn it all off and right. like ship it out to you. I'm like, okay, that's kind of dumb, but on the same token, ah, it's better than it getting fucking electrocuted. Like, right. at least somebody somebody flips the switch, yeah, and the light turns on. You know, We're not- it's not just the light is on and you don't know why. I like that about Halloween though because. I don't want to know a backstory from Michael Myers. Like, honestly, I don't even want him to be related to Laurie Strode. I like that he's just a fucking... He, they show you the beginning of the movie. He stabs somebody when he's a kid. He stabs his sister. Right. Now he's grown up and fucking, like, 6'5", and just wants to kill people in his house. Like, right. that's all it needs. It doesn't need, like, oh, he was abused, and that's why he's psychotic. That makes him sympathetic, and that makes Michael Myers suck, because Michael Myers isn't really supposed to be a sympathetic character. He's supposed to elicit this fucking, like, oh, I feel bad for him, and then you trust him, and he fucking stabs you. That's what's scary about it, is anybody that thinks they get through to him is is getting stabbed, and it's just, he's evil. Did, um, do you feel? I'm, I'm curious. Like, has Zombie done anything since his first films? Or yeah, he did uh, a movie called Thirty One. He did Lords of Salem. And but his career kind of took a down. And he just did. He experience. just put out Three from Hell, uh, which we'll probably review oh, here. Nice. At some point, I'm gonna get it when it comes out. I'll lend it to you guys. Three from Hell, you said. That's like the sequel to Devil's Rejects and House of yep. a Thousand Corpses. I've never seen Devil's Rejects. Dude, it's Devil's Rejects. You gotta watch fucking Devil's Rejects. That movie's unbelievable. Yeah, really good. See, House of a Thousand Corpses had great bits about it, and I really think he's got a good sense of art direction. He yes. can tell story. Yeah. But. I just thought it was a little too close to Texas Me Chainsaw Massacre for my taste. I thought it was too derivative of Chip. Ch- it was super derivative of that, for the, sure. The whole family thing and the you you gotta see the sequel. And there's they, definitely they the Ed Gein thing where you know they turn the one kid into like a, a fucking mermaid boy. Yeah. You know, but, but Ed Gein used to like take skin and make lamps and shit. Yeah. It's one of the, like the they, classic series. The killers. sequel makes it like a road movie. Like it right. takes them on the road, uh, just. Fighting the law, basically, or running from now, the law. Now, the, the main chick, she's zombie's That's wife. Zombie's right. wife. Okay, yeah, right. yeah. And she plays the stripper in Halloween, right? The mom, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's hot. Hell yeah. I fucking hated Rob Zombie's Halloween, and I wanted to like it so bad. Like, I was so excited. Like, to me, that's the coolest thing. Like, Rob Zombie's gonna 
you know, the only thing I heard that was cooler was like years before Rob Zombie was going to direct a Crow movie that took place in 2037 or something. Like, I would watch that. Like, a mix of Blade Runner and The Crow directed by Rob Zombie. I would watch that. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm glad they didn't make that in, like, 1998 because it would be, like, (laughs) Battlefield Earth. Yeah, but it's so funny that, like, the dude who's in this band who kind of sounded like James Hetfield back in the day, that's what he used to say in high school when that first record came out. Like, oh, my God, he sounds like Hetfield. And, uh, because that was all our point of reference, but he showed up on Headbangers Ball, he's doing, like, graffiti art in the background behind Ricky Rack. And he was only supposed to do that one day, and he just kept coming back. And MTV just let him in. Because he got more and more famous. But then but then he fired his band, did Osher Creep, and got really electronica. And then those fucking first Rob Zombie albums, though, he was onto something. Astro Creep's all right. No, 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 no. The fucking, the White Zombie shit I like, that's all good. But there's the first, like, solo album that he did was... Dragula. No, Billy Deluxe, yeah, but Dragula and... Uh, um, Fucking Phantom Stranger, uh, uh, Living Dead Girl. It's got like a still bunch a good of sense of song, a good sense of hook, and, he was, and, and a sense of rock. He was but. absolutely onto something when, like, if he did that with White Zombie, like, I, I think they were probably resistant to that idea of like putting synthesizers in. It's like right. it's not our band. I would imagine. Like, I he, wanted that bass player Darcy. Was her name Darcy? Or no, that was the Smash Smash Pumpkins. Uh, the bass player from uh, White Zombie. She's Sean. Oh, oh yeah. She's, Oh, fuck oh, yeah. I, I saw her. She was in another band. I saw right. her open for the Mist. So she's still playing. That's good. I, well, I don't know if they're still I mean, playing. It was something, they casket something uh-huh. or something. I saw them open for the Misfits, and they were good, but they were like uh, like a Brian Setzer, like, but horror punk kind of band. That's cool. It was cool, yeah. I could dig that. Um, yeah, like a, like a cycle. But I don't think they're thing. still around. I don't. I haven't seen uh, her do anything band, in years. I bet you will get a White Zombie fucking reunion. Why not? Well, I think it'll happen. That first know. record is... Th- it was groundbreaking. I thought it was a groundbreaking... Because it was sort of... You had the industrial scene coming out, and we're, we're still kind of a hangover from the thrash being becoming mainstream, and it sort of just fit, and it sort of fit into the whole... You know what I always movie. liked it is because it was fucking funky, man. Like... Like, it's like fucking, like, funk metal, almost. Yeah, right. Like, in a way, like, very... The so metal was, was getting funky. <laughs> if you were in funk, there was a band called Mind Funk that a lot of people forgot, but they were kind of like a thrash band, but they had, like... Good I moves. also think, too, Rob the Zombie... Rob thing. Zombie's uh, a lot like Alice Cooper, and, like, he knows his, his strengths, and he knows his weaknesses. Like, yeah. Rob Zombie ain't gonna be singing fucking Robert Plant. Like, that guy can't really <laughs> sing. He does pretty much one thing, and it's like, <laughs> like he's just fucking, like he has yeah. one kind of voice, and like he'll, hey, hey, you know, he, Rob Zombie has about ten, like, ten things that he does. He's like a ten-trick pony, right? But when he does them all different and changes it up, and like John Five plays guitar for him, is a sick guitar player. Oh, I know Johnny Five. Everybody knows Johnny. Johnny Five Alive? Yeah, he, well, John, is it just John Five? It's John Five, yeah. It's Johnny Five. Johnny Five is a robot. Yeah. I know Johnny Five is a robot, but I thought that's why he named himself that. But he used to show up on that metal show a lot. He was in the Hired Guns documentary about all the... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. He, he was like one of the he guys... Seems like, he was basically like a hired gun for Rob Zombie, and Rob Zombie fucking just like loved he him. Kept, like, and kept him. Yeah. Rob Zombie on that film specifically said, they got him good... <laughs> But then you also have to be able to live with them for six months out of the year. Yeah. And it's like to find both those things is extremely hard. So when you can find a guy who's a reasonable human being and a great player, you right. keep them. And and they have like idea. Like John Five, like basically I think Rob Zombie was like fucking done with music yeah. for a while. Like and then he he started to like pal around with John Five and like they did something. I forget what it was, like some tribute to something. And uh was that when they did Brick House for the one record? For the, I don't know. For the one movie? I don't know. I think they actually got Lionel Richie to be on they the They did, yeah. yeah. Lionel Richie sings on Brick House. <laughs> it was from uh, House of Cows and Corpses. Yeah, she's a brick house. Ooh. Really? That's it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he sings, he sings with Rob Zombie. He sings nice. He sings like Lionel Richie. Rob Zombie sings like Rob Zombie. Yeah, um, uh, they, were on a, they were on a talk show together. Like, I, I, was it Leno? I forget which one it was. I always love Rob Zombie on talk shows because he's so fucking normal and it like yeah, it, it like bugs everybody out. Yeah. Like I think that's the greatest thing. 
to be like this like mysterious like character and then just oh well you know uh, like he fucking kind of talks like Groucho Marx a little bit yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's like weird it's delivery. Like, ah, you know, ah. I don't know. He looks and talks like the dude you hang out with at the Clash Bar, basically. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he just looks like a red skinnier. Like yeah. ah. But um, like if Steven Tyler fucking had dreadlocks. I don't know. I always, uh, I, I was disappointed with Rob Zombie. Like I wanted him to be a better filmmaker, but then again, it's like he never made a fucking movie. He just right. decided to make a movie one day. Like, why would I expect him to be? You know, some like auteur. Well, his trailer in the Grindhouse thing was was one of the better of those Grindhouse trailers. I liked all so, of them. And I think, actually. and I think that's that's what kind of got him the gig. Because Nicolas Cage has Fu Manchu. Yeah. Uh-huh. His was were- werewolf Nazis. From yeah, he already. Uh, but he, that was after House of a Thousand Corpses. Was that after a Thousand Hours? Yeah. I thought that was before. I think. I, I'm pretty I sure it was in the game. But he. I think he directed all the videos, though, too. Yeah, he did all his videos and stuff. Well, and uh, he had that funny one, which was kind of like... I guess it was the Dragula one. Where he's in the car? The fuck? Oh, what was the one where... Like, it starts with, like, I'm Professor So-and-so on some Saturday morning cartoon, and we're going to watch a horror movie. And I think that's probably Dragula. Was that Dragula? And he had the beakers in his hands. The, and there was, like, a monster. Yeah. Him. I don't know. And it was sort of like one of those... Dude, like, that's... Old he's doing season chef, one. You know. Rob Zombie. You ever watch his show, his live show? Unless you caught him at one of the shows where he just Early decided, on. like in the nineties or the early two oh, so thousands, you saw him like he had the giant fucking like robots yeah. that come chase him around the stage and shit. Like it's he does fest, I think he does all this crazy shit and it's like awesome. Like it's oh uh, yeah for for his lack of fucking being able to really sing, he doesn't even sing the songs like the way to record it. Like he just kind of does like what he knows the words and he sings it, but it's like different than hearing him on the record. Was he attached to one of the? In City movies somehow? No, I don't think so. It wasn't important. Robert Rodriguez, right, who directed Grindhouse. That's probably what you're thinking. Uh, maybe. For me, House of a Thousand Corpses. Well, he did one of, the, one of the things in Grindhouse. Yeah. House of a Thousand Corpses wasn't really about like the plot. It was more kind of like a stylized art film, I thought. It was kind of like an HR Geiger run amok. Like, it was just kind of like the way things looked in each scene got more and more fucked up yeah, and it weird was... and shit. It, well, I don't know that it was really about like the plot. You know? I don't well, know. That was the way I thought I think about he it. just <laughs> thought up cool scenes. Right. And, and he Found a way Strong to fucking together. cobble them together. Yeah, <laughs> there, there was just so much going on in that house that didn't make any sense. Like, all right, so you had the big tall, like, doofy guy, and the girl's like, "Let me out, let me out." And he just let, lets her out. And she thinks she's getting out, and then she gets pushed, and then she falls back, and all these hands come out of nowhere and just grab her. It's like an Alice in Wonderland kind of thing. Yeah, before. yeah, it is kind of like fucking very. Oh, and then when they're wearing off. her dad's face and mocking her. Oh man, oh, that was right. that was rough. That was rough to watch. Who's your daddy? I think they keep yelling. And they're like, burn the guy's face. <laughs> yeah, Rob Zombie is a visionary. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, I think, who's your asshole of the week? Oof. Why do I always have to go first? I can go first. Go for it. My asshole of the week is uh, the Bluefield Civic Center who fails to publish on their schedule where they pick you up at the fucking train station to take you back to a nearby apartment. Bluefield so, Civic Center. Uh, fuck you. <laughs> nice. Fuck you. Nice. My asshole of the week is a gremlin referred to as Spike. He has a striped <laughs> haircut. He's kind of a dick. And if he can get into a, a, a big body of water to multiply himself, he will. Be careful, people. Oh, it's coming. Watch out. My asshole of the week is this guy, Glenn, who, uh... Just seems like a real negative Nancy. Glenn? Glenn? Glenn. Yeah, this guy Glenn. Do we know him? I don't know. Is he a friend of the show? Do we know Glenn? Is it Glenn Danzig? Is it Glenn Danzig? I don't know. Find out next week Ooh, on Cult are... of Contempt. Oh, oh, before we go, before we go. Um, big announcement. Yeah. Uh, the second uh, Cult of Contempt event will be at Billy's Midway Ooh. in Hawthorne, New Jersey. It's Paul's birthday. Nice. Yeah, so we're going to get everybody there and come hang out, and it's going to be a, a gay old time. Uh, details to follow. Details we've got to some follow. fun shit going on. A lot of prizes, a lot of fun. Santos dresses Elton John is in the works. Nice. So you get the Antichrist and Elton John. <laughs> All right. And see you there. Peace. Later, people. You'll be missed.
Love y'all. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments, or want to hear your band on the show, just write us at cultofcontemptpodcast at gmail.com. If you'd like to see back episodes of the show, youtube.com backslash plan10studios, cultofcontempt.org, or right here on Facebook, Cult of Contempt Network. Even check us out on Instagram, at Cult of Contempt Podcast. You want to reach Paul? It's at Paul Mauled on Twitter and Instagram, and Paul of the Living Dead on Facebook.com. Phil Perry, the writer, on Instagram, and his Facebook fan page, at Phil Perry, the writer. I'm Jim Cook at Jim Cook on Facebook or Jim Cook Voice Actor on Facebook. You want to get a hold of me directly, jcookvoice at yahoo.com. On behalf of Paul and Phil, I want to thank you for listening. We'll see you next week at 8.15. I'm Jim Cook. Transmission out. Stay by for contact. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of Cult of Contempt podcast. If you have any questions or comments,